How's it going everybody? In this video I'm going to be talking about what is happiness. So you might think, you know, sort of at a surface level that happiness is something fairly intuitive or easy to understand or something that uh, really you get the idea of. But the problem and the nuance arises that when we use the word happiness, it can mean a number of different things, right? So the most common or classic definition would be sort of an emotional state of elation, right? Sort of this nice, pleasurable feeling that you have emotionally. However, we often use happiness to mean something that also encompasses sort of a, a more purposeful or meaningful state, right? There are a number of people who say that they're not happy, and it doesn't mean that they don't feel positive emotion because they may feel some of that in their life, but they're missing sort of a more meaningful piece. So these two pieces, you know, to start with are some of the ways that we can start to tease out and define happiness. Now, I'm not going to give you like a really strict, okay, this is exactly what happiness means, but it's been uh, four or five years since I made a video on this topic and my views have sort of evolved and become more nuanced, especially since writing my book. So I'm going to sort of elaborate the model that I see that that seems to best fit happiness, especially after spending so much time trying to really dig into the nuances. So what makes the most sense to me is a more broad definition around uh, basically happiness being the outcome of an evaluation of an experience. Now that sounds a, a little bit, you know, technical or deep or whatever, but it's really not, right? Basically, whenever things happen to you, right, you focus on a particular thing and evaluate it However pleasurable or desirable that evaluation ends up being is what I would call happiness or the closest thing that I think relates to happiness. Now, one thing that we need to clear up is basically this idea that you're either happy or not happy. And I don't really see that as true. And, and maybe my example will help you also fall into that camp. But basically, you know, when you're doing certain types of experiences, you are happier than others. And, and another way to put this is, you know, there's sort of a scale of desirability so there are certain things that are very very desirable and make you feel really good and certain things that are really really not so you know something in this bucket might be like breaking your leg or getting in a, in a fight or something like that and over here is something like you know trying uh, a new food that's the best thing you've ever had or something like that right and then in the middle somewhere is something like picking out groceries right it's not something that that you would say that you're happy doing really or most people wouldn't say that but it's not something that you would say that you're unhappy doing. Anyway, so the, the point that I'm trying to get across is uh, in the sort of model or idea that I have put together, you basically are evaluating experiences for their desirability. And the reason that your evaluation matters is because there are certain baselines, but how you interpret those baselines matters a lot. And I think the best exercise, <laughs> the best example of this is exercise, right? So when you exercise, you put your body in a state of stress and generally it's unpleasant, right? Your, your lungs are burning or your muscles are burning or whatever else, it's generally unpleasant. Now, if you weren't exercising, let's say you're not trying to work on your fitness, that same set of feelings, that same physical sensation would be very unpleasant, right? That's, that's sort of the baseline. The baseline is unpleasant. Now your evaluation makes a big difference and your evaluation is sort of, you know, the interpretation, the way that you choose to frame the experience or the way that you just frame the experience naturally. So on, on, on the one hand, it could be something along the lines of, okay, you know, my body hurts, this sucks, but I'm using this to get in shape. So as I feel, you know, my muscles getting tight and my lungs wearing out or whatever else, I know that this is helping me become more healthy, right? That sort of frame pushes your uh, original experience towards the side of being more pleasurable or desirable. Now, in, on the opposite side, right, an evaluation of the exact same experience around like, oh, I hate exercising, I don't want to do this, this is a waste of time, that evaluation will push the baseline even more negative. So, to kind of bring this model together, uh, what I see as happiness, or the like, most useful definition of happiness, is looking at sort of experiences, right, whatever experience you happen to be focusing on, and then your evaluation of that experience produces some set of desirability. Now, you know, most of the time this isn't a conscious 
process that we spend a ton of time going, oh, okay, I'm going to, you know, force my interpretation to change. But that is one of the things that we can do to increase our happiness. In the same way, we can also look at these different states, right? These experiences, like exercising, um, like getting in a fight, all these other things. We can take action to sort of change our environment and experiences so that we can experience more of the things that have a better baseline. And then for the, the, the things that have a negative baseline that we have to experience, then we can work on our interpretations. And between those two things, we can sort of optimize out our happiness. Now, the way that you think about happiness might be a little bit different, but for me, this is the, the way that makes the most sense and encompasses sort of both of those pieces, right? So when we look at, I've talked a lot about sort of the emotional pleasure or or the physical pleasure sort of side of thing, but the purpose piece fits into this model as well in terms of if you are taking some sort of action, like let's say that you have a, a kid and they've just thrown up and you're cleaning it up, that actual instance, that um, activity has a baseline desirability that's very, very low. However, the interpretation, which could go either way, right? You could just focus on, wow, I hate this so much, but you could also uh, put that under the guise of sort of, oh, I'm a caretaker and it's important to me that I take care of my child who's sick or whatever else. That makes a big difference. Um, in the way that you evaluate your happiness or the way that you think about happiness. So again, there are many different ways that people talk about happiness, different definitions that you can use, different pieces. But for me, this model, especially since I've been looking at happiness and focusing on it for the last you know, several years, is one of the most useful ways for me to think about happiness. And you know, for people I've shared it with, has also been useful for them because it's more clear than some of the ways that we commonly use happiness right it's not just sort of this emotional feeling and it is more clear on how you can actually take action or what processes you can take to sort of increase your happiness now at the end of the day you know the baseline is that happiness is an emotion to an degree now it's very likely that you will find people who are going to say oh well here is the definition of happiness and it only includes the emotional piece or this is the definition of happiness and it includes fulfillment and purpose and this is the definition and this includes overall well-being it doesn't really matter what specific definition you use right it doesn't matter what exactly you think the word means it's more about understanding the experiences that you have and the different handles that you have or levers that you have to be able to change some of your experience and improve that right so on to the reflection question one how would you define happiness? Two, how can you use that definition to help improve or optimize your life? So all in all, uh, I just wanted to, you know, give my sort of model for happiness and how I think about it, uh, what I think is probably one of the more useful ways to sort of construct some of these thoughts. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, other people have other ideas. I would love to hear what, what you think. Uh, other than that, that's all I've got for this video. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, topics you want me to cover, throw them in the box below. I'll get to them as soon as I can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second to subscribe as it really helps out a lot. If you're looking for more content, there's all sorts of information over at howtohappy.com. And if you want something a little bit more condensed and concise, I've also written the book Mindscaping, which is essentially a framework for optimizing happiness. So we'll have the link there as well. And that's all I've got. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.